it's it's definitely different. Um, having a head coach that's, that was a player, like everyone can relate to him. So it's yeah. like uh, there's a respect level. Right. Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders podcast and the Student Body Right podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Everybody to another glorious episode of the Put on Raiders podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, along with my co-host, Ryan Holmes, and we are podcasting on the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. See who they out here in Southern California, P-O-R-S-P-R is my Twitter handle, and Ryan Holmes is R-H-O-L-M-22. Ryan, you got, a little, you got the shirt you got on, it looks fresh. I mean, that, that shirt looks fresh, man. I like that shirt. Um, break it out of the closet today. <laughs> you got to break it out, new season. Um, and then you also got the nice crisp, like, right in Brock Bowers' is, um uh locker locker there so that looks good as well um a lot of stuff we're talking we're, we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about the um the raiders and their 22 personnel we'll talk about um the matchups between these defensive and offensive coordinators and of course um antonio pierce and his you know can he get the things going in the right direction as far as in-game decision making because that's a, because that's a big factor here when you're a head coach of a football team so we'll just jump right in it 12 personnel, the Raiders um, are, you know, that's what they, I mean, even the depth chart has a couple of, has, has both tight ends there. Um, a lot of fans, I think, they, I think, I think, I think a lot of fans th- think it's going to be like this impossible thing, a possible dream to, to um, defend. They're going to, there's some ups and some downs. So we'll, we'll go, we can go over that. Some also strength and weaknesses of being in um, 12 personnel on offense. Yeah, clearly they released their depth chart again today, updated in 12 personnel as their base offense. So they're going to they're gonna run out there with one back and two tight ends a majority of the time. So you're going to see Michael Mayer lined up as the inline uh, tight end, and then the move tight end will be Brock Bowers. And so he'll line up in the slot. He'll line in kind of in a wing position. He'll line up in the backfield. He'll line up at fullback. Um, so you're going to see Brock Bowers move all over the field and, and – The problem that's going to present for the defense is that the defense wants to play base personnel. And and let's just say it's a 4-3 defense. So that third linebacker comes on the field. Now he's got a guard, Brock Bowers or Michael Mayer. There's going to be a matchup that the Raiders are going to be able to take advantage of. If they want to come out and nickel, and then you you have a veteran quarterback in Gardner Minshew, and then you spread him out. Uh, And then you put Brock Bowers in the slot, or you move him around and get him moving across the formation. Um, I'm sorry, if they come out of nickel, then you run it right out. You, you you have those two tight ends block that that nickel back. If they come out in base, then you spread them out. Um, and so you're going to have a mismatch pretty much every play, as long as the Raiders are dialed in. If Gardner Minshew knows this offense well enough to where he can get them in and out of plays based on the defensive looks, the Raiders should have an advantage. And that doesn't even count what's going to happen uh, with Devontae Adams. Like They're not going to leave him one-on-one on the outside. So he's going to have safety help his way, you're probably going to have Brock Bowers on the other side of the field uh, away from Devontae Adams a majority of the time. And then I think the real issue you're going to run into here is if the Raiders can't run the football. If they come out in 12 personnel and the Chargers come out in nickel defense and the Raiders can't run it at them, then the advantage goes to the defense. So they're going to have to run the football uh, out of 12 personnel to be successful and get the, the play action going. What it's also going to do is it's going to limit the snaps for Trey Tucker. And I know a lot of the Raider fans want to see Trey Tucker get involved. Um, but when you're in 12 personnel, uh, Brock Bowers kind of becomes that slot receiver. Or you can put him out wide and move Devontae Adams inside or uh, Jacoby Myers inside. You're going to have to take Myers off the field in 12 uh, to put in Trey Tucker because you're not going to take Devontae Adams off the field. So um, when they go to 11 personnel, you're probably going to take Mayer off the field. Um but now your front ha- your front five has to hold up. Those tackles have to hold up one on one with the edge rushers, or you're going to have to keep Bowers in to help block, and then, and then you're at a disadvantage. So, um, twelve personnel only works if the Raiders can run the ball against nickel, and the two tackles can hold up when they want to go to eleven personnel uh, and keep Bowers on the field, and he doesn't have to stay in, or else the running back's going to have to chip as well. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. It, the Raiders have the opportunity 
to dictate to the defense what they want to do, but they're going to have to be able to, like I said, run the football uh, against those smaller defenses if that's what teams want to do. And if they want those teams want to go heavy, then they're going to have to be able to throw the football. So um, yeah. we'll see. This is the first week. We'll see what happens. And the one on, and then it's, it's a one on one league. So you want to be able to have your your offensive line be able to block the block one on one without having a chip because you, you didn't draft um, Brock Bowers to chip. You you want him to be out in the pattern. You want to be out the out out getting get into his routes, all those things like that. And same thing with the running backs too. Like if you want to if you want to be able to you get to a check down in a situation where um, you want to get Zamir White a, a, a catch in the flat because that's what's open. The last thing you want to do is have him chip that delays everything. You want to, you know, guys like, um, you know, um, Cody White here and um, Thayer Munford are going to have to hold up. They're going to have to hold up um, and, and, and block. And the one thing I will say about this uh, Charger defense is that they do have um, Thule, uh, who had a really good rookie year last year, um, some guy named Khalil Mack, and then and, and Bosa's going to play. Bosa didn't get hurt yet. He is the first game of the year. So, so Bosa's both, so playing. So um, M- uh, Jesse Minter is very creative with his blitzes. Um, his um, different kind of fronts, all those things like that. So we'll see how that cat and mouse game go between the offensive and defensive coordinators here as the Raiders, um, the Raiders battle the Chargers here. Yeah, I think the Raiders are going to have to be ready for a lot of sim pressure. So he's going to bring pressure, but he's going to bring it with a four-man front. So he's going to drop someone out. Yes. Um, a lot, and they're going to bring someone. So they're going to overload sides. Uh, the Raiders' offensive line is going to have to communicate. There's going to be stunts inside. We'll see what he does with those two end rushers because he did a lot of sim pressure in Michigan. Obviously, when you have Bosa and Mack, you're not going to do it as much, but I would still expect them uh, to do that. So they're going to drop someone out. Like I said, they're going to bring it back or they're going to bring a nickel. Um, so the Raiders have to be prepared for that. The one thing I, I want to see what the Raiders do is who's the guy that's going to be going in motion? Are they going to move Bowers around in motion? Or are they going to move Adams around in motion? Because you can't move them both. Mm-hmm. Um, so who's the guy they're going to want to move around to, to get these matchups? My guess is it's going to be Bowers early. You're going to leave Devontae outside, let him work one-on-one. Now Bowers, if he, if he motions into the fullback position, now you can leak him out on the flat. I think early on you're going to see them just get the ball in the hands of Bowers all over the field within the short area, within five, six yards, the line of scrimmage, and just let's see what he can do after the catch. I don't think you're going to see him working vertically down the field as much as you will as the season progresses. I think early in the season, it's going to be outside zone. You're going to be running bootleg action off of it. You're going to bring him underneath. You're just going to get the ball in his hands. You're going to see a lot of quick game uh, out of the Raiders, I would think. Um, especially going up against this defense uh, with the Chargers. We'll see if they play man or they play a ton of zone. Don't really know what to expect. Uh, my guess is they're going to play a lot of man, or I'm sorry, mm-hmm. zone based on their secondary. Um, but they do have Derwin James, who who could be the equalizer. If Derwin James can, can handle Brock Bowers one-on-one, then that gives the advantage to the defense as well. So a lot of intriguing matchups here. It's going to come down to the offensive line versus the defensive line. The Raiders have to move these guys off the ball. They have to run the football, and then when they go to throw the ball, they have to be able to protect with that five-man front and maybe have a back help or get the ball out quickly uh, in the flat or get it to the back and, and let him operate. Let Zemir White, whoever it is, Amir yeah. Abdullah. And, Ryan, this is the most intriguing part of the game for me. I don't know why this is so, just, this is so crazy. Like the Raiders' offense against the Charger defense, I think that's where this game is going to shift – you know, in a, in a big way, this this to see who, who see who comes out on top on on Sunday because you have Minter and 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 what he does and the unknown of how it's going to work with um w- with Lou Getze. Like we we've talked about Lou Getze, you know, highest rated show was was not Lou Getze as an OC. Lowest rated show was <laughs> when it was Lou big Lou Getze. So everybody had a big you know kind of that sigh of like oh, I can't believe they actually we have this guy who I dissed on Twitter for like you know, for a whole year for a, a lot of Raider fans did. And now, he's, and now he's our OC, but um, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be the biggest thing. And what they do, I think, can they move it? Do they have the pieces to move it? I think so. But then also the biggest part of any offense is just what you do in the red zone. So can they, can they, can they, or are they able to do something in the red zone? Um, I, I get against a defense that is just, you know, kind of, you know, they, like you said, they, like they look like they're going to bring, six or seven but it's going to be four 
sometimes it results in a free rusher, a free rusher a lot of the time. Yeah, Minch is going to have to to figure all this out at the line of scrimmage, and he's yeah. going to have to guess right a lot. Um, which is why hopefully this offense has a lot of built-in hot hot options. So if there's if there's a if they bring six against five and he's unprotected, then there has to be a hot option. There, there has to be outlets in this offense for Gardner Minshew to get the ball out quickly if the Raiders don't have the numbers, uh, yeah. if they're bringing a lot of pressure. Um, red zone is going to be important. They got to get to the red zone first. So let's see yes. how this offense moves to football. Hopefully, if Brock Bowers needs to be 100%, he needs to be a full go on practice uh, tomorrow. He's going to be a huge part of this offense. If, if he's limited at all, that really is going to limit what this offense can, can do. You're going to see a lot of basically what you saw last year if they don't have Brock Bowers. Um, or you just go 11 and then you put Trey, uh, Trey Tucker on the field and you try to take advantage with him. But um, they're going to have to get chunk plays. Gardner Minshew is not going to go out there and complete 70% of his passes and um, be accurate on all that underneath stuff. So when when the opportunity is there, when there's one-on-one coverage, he's going to throw it down the field and hopefully – uh, the Raiders can either take advantage of that via, you know, a pass interference or a big completion, hopefully a big touchdown down the field and, and back those safeties up. Yeah. We'll see what happens there. I mean, that's, that's going to be a really intriguing matchup there um, between um, um, Getsy and, and Minter um, as far as that goes. Do you think, I mean, as far as like, have you, I know Bowers has been like held out because of like for, for for precautionary reasons, is it any reason to believe that he might not? I mean, we don't actually know. I mean, we don't any any as many updates about that as far as like about nothing. I would guess it's precautionary at this point. Um, yeah. they only kept three tight ends on the roster, so you would think so, yeah, there he's was any question that he wasn't going to be ready, that they would yeah. have kept the fourth guy. So the fact they kept three leads me to believe he is hundred hundred percent or ninety five percent. They just he's going to be such a big part of this offense that they they just can't risk him getting hurt that last preseason game and just keep him out if there's anything bugging him. And I would say, I would say to that point too, as well, like it's interesting to see if his style of play can, can he stay, can he stay on the field? Because he is a guy who is, who does play like Gronkowski in a lot of ways where like, he just, he just, he's going towards contact, um, you know, getting hit a lot, you know, dragging people, you know, you know, down the field and also use that speed to get away. So we'll see if that, like, if that kind of hinders him a little bit. But we'll, we'll I mean, I think, listen, the talent is there. Um, but, you know, we just, we just worry about somebody getting him the football on a consistent basis. And that's the biggest thing because he's not, Minshew was not a um, high completion percentage type quarterback here. It's going to be some 50s and 60s, uh, low 60s games for, for, for Raider fans to kind of, to, to kind of look at. Um, on the flip side, you got Greg Roman, you got Patrick Graham. Um, it's interesting. I mean, it was, obviously Graham has been um, really, really good um, for the Raiders. Now, and now put in a situation where he's facing back-to-back teams where the hardball, hardballs are head, head coaches, and both of them like to run the football. And that might be a thing where we say, "Hey." Can he stop? Can, can Patrick Graham's team stop the run? Because um, it's going to be a big part of it too. Because I mean, they're going to run the ball. Like unless the score gets away from them, they're going to keep running the football. Who are they going to throw it to? <laughs> they don't have any wide receivers over there. You know, Josh Palmer. Um, Harbaugh came in and got rid of them. So you got Lad Lad McConkey coming in as a rookie. You got Josh Palmer. Um, I don't know if you saw today, they have a 300 pound fullback now that the the starting fullbacks like six, four, 300 pounds. I saw on Twitter today. So they're going to line up and they're going to run the football. Um, The Raiders are going to have to bring their big boy pants. They're going to have to get in those trenches. You're going to see a lot of five man fronts. Um, I see a lot of people that have concerns about the secondary. I'd be shocked if Nate Hobbs isn't starting. Uh, If they're, if they're going to go base defense and play a three, four, Nate Hobbs is going to start opposite. Uh, Jack Jones, you need his tackling ability on the field. You can't take him off the field uh, for Bennett if they're just going to line up and run the football. I think Bennett comes in and nickel, but then Hobbs will slide inside and play the slot. But I think Hobbs and and Jones are going to be your starting corners and base. Um, I don't expect the Raiders to play a ton of nickel in this game. If if the Chargers are going to line up in heavy personnel and try to run the football, the Raiders can't stay in nickel. They can't stop the run if they do that. So um, you're going to see a lot of John Jenkins. Um, you're going to see a lot of 
Max Crosby. You're going to see hopefully Tyree Wilson in there moving guys around. Hopefully, you know, Malcolm Kuntz can set the edge and then you're going to have Splane at Diablo. Um, and then you're going to have another big body. So I, like, I, like I said, I, I expect three big guys across the front, maybe a bare front. And then you have Kuntz and Crosby outside of them, two corners, two safeties, and the two middle linebackers. Um, we'll see. If, if Nate Hobbs has to slide inside and play kind of a linebacker slot hybrid in this game, um, the Raiders are going to have a tough time stopping the run, which is two defensive tackles with Kuntz uh, and then obviously Crosby. But Wilkins is going to have to get in there too. Wilkins is going to have to be a presence because, yeah. like I said, they're going to play action. They're going to throw the ball down the field. They're going to take calculated shots. Yeah. This is not going to be Justin Herbert dropping back 40 times and airing it out. That is not what this offense is going to be. They're going to turn around and hand the ball off to J.K. Dobbins. Um, I believe Gus Edwards is over there now as well. Yeah. Um, they just don't have the firepower outside to throw the ball down the field consistently. And they're going to wear this Raiders team out early in week one. They're going to challenge them. Uh, they're going to line up and they're going to run right at them. And I think we're, um, you got Slater there. You got Zion, you got Zion Johnson. Um, also, also the, um, you know, the, their, the first round pick, Joe, Joe, Alt, yeah. Joe Alt is there as well. So, I mean, you know, they're going to they're try to smash it at you. And then, yes, they have Chark, they have Palmer, they have McConkey, and then those guys are not actually what the Raiders have um, uh, as, far, as far as receivers go, but play action gets people open. Um, you know, um, you know, just see you, I mean, you, you're not being able to, you not being able to stop the run on a consistent basis will get people open. So if, if they, if they can't stop the run, then it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I, I can't, I can't imagine them trying to run wide against the Raiders, especially with Max being so good against the run. Um, but we'll, but, but we'll, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, they're, they're going to take, they're going to take those shots, those big plays down the field. And they're going to try to, they're going to try to hopefully, you know, use maybe um, Lab McConkey as that slot guy to get to, to move the chains if they need it, a, a third and five to get six yards, those type of deals as far as that is. Um, but I am, I'm not, until I see it, I don't, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting choice, I would say, because I mean, with, in, a, in a league where you can find wide receivers on every team, they kind of chose to kind of go this route. I thought maybe they would at least get at least one, you know, veteran receiver who you can count for to get like, you know, 60, you know, six, catch 60 balls, be a red zone threat, those kind of things. But they chose this route. Um it's weird because this is probably one of the best quarterbacks that Harbaugh's ever had. And they chose to do this. Maybe just maybe and it's, it's year one. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I mean, you would think that if you, if you think you think the Raiders secondary should be able to, to be able to handle at least, you know, at least, at least, at least, at least these guys in man coverage, like, you know, I mean, they shouldn't be like, you know, nobody should be like running free down free by themselves. Like, like, you know, Tyreek Hill. No, and then obviously you have the first round pick Quentin, I, Quentin Johnston over there as well. Yeah. Um, who hopefully that they get something out of this year. Obviously they're going to rely on him. But if I'm the Chargers, I, I come out and I want to see what Patrick Graham's going to do. If, like I said, if he wants to go nickel and he wants to put Bennett on the field, yeah. um, with Hobbs in the slot, I'm going to motion Hobbs to the to the opposite side of the field. And I'm going to run it Coons on the edge, and I'm going to run it Bennett. I'm going to run it outside if they're going to do that. So. We're going to see what this cat and mouse game looks like right away because, yeah. um, like I said, you're probably better off just going with a base 3-4 and putting Hobbs out there to set the edge. But if you have Koontz and Bennett on the same side of the field, I'm running at those two guys. I'm going to yeah. make Bennett set the edge. I'm going to make Koontz set the edge um, if they do that. I think what the Raiders have to do is they have to they have to get them in third and long. They can't let them run the ball and get into second and five, third and two, and Big just place. matriculate the ball down the field. They need sacks. They need – Crosby's going to have to take that rookie all – he's going to have to baptize him in his first start. If they if they leave him one-on-one -on -one out there, he's going to have to win a majority of those reps. Christian Wilkins is going to have to win inside. Um, I've seen a lot of things on, online about the Raiders holding up a man coverage. Patrick Graham doesn't play man coverage. He's a cover three, cover mixing three, a cover one, one cover four. He's going to be cover three, cover four. The Raiders were good last year because they didn't do a lot of things defensively. They made it really simple. They played three or four coverages, and they became really good at that. So I wouldn't expect them to change that up, especially when you have the same guys coming back on the defense. So I expect them to play a lot of cover three. Um, 
have that three deep shell, have the four underneath guys, and, and this pass rush has to get home. They spent the money on yeah. Wilkins, Crosby, and Koontz has to come alive. Um, I don't think they're going to blitz a lot. I, I think they're just going to yeah. tell those four guys up front, go get them. Herbert is coming off a foot injury. We don't know how mobile he is. I wouldn't expect him to be running around like crazy. Um, I would expect them to do a lot of short game as well because – I don't expect them to drop back and throw the ball based on Greg Roman. And I really don't expect them to drop back and throw the ball based on a rookie right tackle making his first start. And he has the best edge rusher in the game across from a Max Crosby. So um, we'll see what both teams want to do. Yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I just, I, this is just, I mean, it's, it, it's a little bit, the in the in game stuff is going to be, it's going to be fun. But what you they probably won't even know until you get to halftime really kind of get a feel for what they want to do. Um, Adjustments also, are going to be huge. You know, that's what they did, exactly. And then do you feel like, I mean, do you, is it, do you feel like if the Raiders get behind, that kind of forces a guy like Patrick Graham out of his style of defense as far as the cover four, cover cover three stuff? Like, he, you know, does he, he just stays in it? Regardless. He's going to stay in it. He's going to stay in it regardless. Okay. Yeah, I, Unless I, they can't stop the run, if they if they're giving up six seven yards of carry and they're going to have to do something different and bring some run blitzes, yeah. um, and stuff like that. But he's not a guy. They're going to keep the ball underneath and rally and tackle and try to strip the ball. They're not going to get up and play man to man and risk getting the ball thrown over their heads. They didn't do it last year. They were very good at limiting the deep ball. I don't think they're going to change at all, especially going into the the third season under Patrick Graham. Play those uh, play play few defenses and play them very well so you can play fast in it so it's difficult, it's difficult for the offense to move the football um so that will be something that will be key in this ball game um as far as the special teams rules i you know unless you cannot i know you can't run up and kick the ball anymore but like unless you can't reach the end zone i just kick it in know, the end zone i just still i just don't i just i just you got kicked in the end zone because I mean I just I don't see how you can possibly like mess around and not kick it in the end zone. It just makes all the sense in order to kick it in the end zone to be done. Like I just the I, the only way the league is going to get these kickoffs is going to be if they say the ball's out to the forty, or you move the kickoff back five yards. Look, yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, you do that too. Yeah, I mean, I bet that's that's all. I know they want kickoff returns and stuff like that, but like, there's no, there's no other way to do it. Like, there's no. I mean, they, I would. The thirty isn't gonna make me want to kick the ball to a player um, with this new blocking and everything up front, where I can, you know, where where I'm susceptible to a big play. I, I can lose the game on that. It's my it's my job. I'm a head coach. I can't do that. Especially early in the season, when you you have young players on special teams, you can't risk giving up field position if the average starting field position is going to be the 27 or 28 if you kick it off and let them return it i'll give them the two yards and then i know exactly where i'm going to start at the 30 getting the kicking the ball high in the air and trying to pin them down there doesn't matter because the team can't the the coverage team can't move to the guy catches the ball anyway so hang time is irrelevant at this point so unless you have a guy that can put it to the two yard line um every time and you know that you have some elite special teams guys. It's really not worth it, especially week one divisional game on the road. I'm making them drive the ball 70 yards every time. I mean, it just makes all sense in the world. Um, I, I, I can't, I can't. And that kick returner they have is a dangerous dude. Number 12, the, the second year guy at TCU at yeah. Davis. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not putting the ball anywhere near his hands. No, it's, 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 it'd be, it'd be crazy. It'd be crazy. Antonio Pierce full of first full season. Now, as the Raiders head coach, um, we've seen the commercials. We've seen him come out of the Impala with the sunglasses on. We've seen all the, we've seen everything like that. Everybody, the ads look great. Raiders, the Raiders social media team, they look good. Um, now they got to win on the field. What are your thoughts about um, because because he has had some moments here of pause, like with when to go for it on fourth down, moments of pause when it's time to um, timeout situations. Um, you know, just all those coaching decisions that they really should kind of go over. I don't know if you saw a lot. I don't know if you saw the most recent episode of um, Hard Knocks where they sat down with Caleb Williams and they showed him um, how to spike the ball. And then if he took one step too far back, it's going to be intentional grounding. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I didn't oh, see that. It's, it's, it's actually, it's actually, it's actually pretty cool. He was just like, he was kind of like, oh, a light, a light bulb went off for, for him too to make sure to make that mistake. Like those are the kind of the meticulous things that I want to see 
AP go over in his head, just be like, you know, hey, like as far as on the coaching side, like yeah, he has to be able, he has to be really ready to go sharp, you know, the two point conversions, all those things like that. When to do those things is going to be very huge for his success with the Raiders. Yeah, and he's under the microscope now. He's no longer the interim. He's the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. So every decision he makes in terms of when to use timeouts, when to challenge, um, when to push the ball down the field in a two-minute drill, when to back off, when to kick a field goal in the red zone, when to go for it on fourth down. It's all going to be scrutinized. Um, I, I expect a very conservative Antonio Pierce early in the season. He's a defensive guy by nature. He built this team to play defense and run the football. You hear him talk about it. Um, um, a lot of kind of what you saw towards the end of last season. So, he's not going to be super aggressive on, on fourth down. He's going to punt the ball and try to play defense. He's going to try to play the field position game. Um, so that's what I expect to see out of him. Now, what he does in the final four minutes going into the half, uh, the final four minutes of the fourth quarter, those are the decisions we're really going to have to scrutinize and, and see if he can make the right decisions. Because if we're going based off of what he did in the preseason, there's still a lot of questions. And I know it was the preseason, and he said he was just trying out different things. Uh, I believe Matt Sheldon uh, might have been the guy's name. I could, could be wrong. But the Raiders have uh, a game management, clock management yeah. guy who's talking to AP. Um, but it's still on AP. He's still yeah. the head coach. So, like, he can't basically say, well, I was told to do this by the analytics department. So I did it. No, you're the head coach. It's your decision. Um, you can take that information into consideration. But at the end of the day, Whatever you decide to do, you have to own those decisions. So um, he has a veteran quarterback in Gardner Minshew, so I would expect him him to be able to help out in the two-minute drill um, in those situations, end of half, end of game. But it's going to be really inter interesting to see, like you said, those when they get around midfield, when they get around the 45 of the, of the opponent, are they going to be aggressive? I tend to think no. I mean, there's <laughs> – yeah, well, we'll we'll see. Cause, I mean, those can be. I mean, you keep giving the ball. I mean, I know you're pinning you're pinning somebody back consistently because that, that that's the hope of it. But at some point, you do have to take a chance. Um, and then if and then you know if you don't take a chance, and then you keep giving away possession, keep giving away possessions, that's going to be tough as well. So we'll see. Um, how how AP does uh, AP does with that. Um, defending defending Herbert. Uh, that's something I was I was kind of thinking about today. He has spent a lot of it, I mean, a lot of his time in in the league. It's in, it seems like when he's he has a high, he's a guy who has a big arm can make all the throws, but he's kind of been saddled with offenses where it's everything has been within ten, you know, fifteen, ten yards of the line of scrimmage. Now this is an offense where they're probably going to just take going to take some shots because they got they got they got they're going to play action, play take shots down the field. Um, he is coming off of a leg injury, so yeah, obviously making a move would definitely be um, really good for the Raiders. What are your thoughts about um, how best ways to defend Herbert or any? I mean, or is he just like defending any good quarterback? Pressure up the middle, things that things that make them feel uncomfortable. I think the edge rusher is going to have to play a contain here. They they can't let Herbert get out of the pocket because when he gets out of the pocket, that's when he throws the ball down the field. Yeah. Um, when he's in the pocket, he likes to throw the ball into the flats, which is actually what's going to be vulnerable when the Raiders play a lot of cover three. So it's going to be up to those flat defenders, whoever those are, uh, whichever version of cover three they're running. Those guys have to rally and tackle. They can't miss tackles in the flats because that's going to turn into a, a three or four yard gain into an eight, 10, 12 yard gain and give them first downs where they can move the ball down the field. So um, I, I think within this offense, they're going to get the ball out quick. Um, like I said, they have they have a rookie right tackle. Uh, they don't have the speed outside to really sit back and wait and let guys separate vertically. So their game plan is going to be run the ball, play action, get the ball on the flat, you know, play action, get the tight end. Um, so the Raiders are going to have to be very good in their underneath coverage. Um, and like I said, and in cover three, I expect that to be obviously Splain, Diablo. Um, they're probably going to have one corner if they're playing cloud. If they're not, they're going to bring, if they're going to play buzz, they're, they're going to bring a safety down in, into that middle. And then they're going to slide a linebacker out in the flat. So um, it's going to be really imperative. The Raiders tackle well in the flat and in the underneath coverage and, and limit yards after, after catch. And then it like, it, it's going to come down to obviously stopping the run, but 
you can't let Herbert get outside because that's when he's going to want to throw down the field. If he does get outside, you want him going to his left. You do not want him going to his right. Big, 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 big game here for the Raiders here, especially when you especially when you see the opponent who they play um, next week. Did you before I I got some uh, over unders for you? I have some fun with some over unders for you for for four four different Raiders here. Um, do you have anything else about the game before you before we go? We're gonna go over unders, then we go prediction on the season and prediction on the game itself. Um, so anything else about the, about the, anything you worked on your mind about this game before the before we switch gears? No, I just think I think we've kind of gone over it. The Raiders have to run the football. If they can't run the football. Mm-hmm. And they 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 have to drop back and throw the ball with Gardner Minshew with with Bosa and Matt coming off the edge. Uh, it could be a long day for the Raiders. So it, like it's it's going to be this way every week. If if they can't run the football, I don't think the offensive line is good enough. Yeah. To just drop back and throw the ball 35, 40 times, and I don't think the quarterback's good enough. What whichever yeah. one you want to put in there isn't good yeah. enough either. So. Um, this offense is going to go as, as they run the football and then they can create matchups with Bowers and Adams. Yeah. Interesting to see how that goes. Speaking of Devontae Adams, over under 1,100 yards for Devontae Adams, over under. For the season? For the season. Oh, I'm going over. Like, going over. He, he almost did that last year, and there was weeks where they didn't even throw in the ball. Go over 1,100. Um, eleven hundred yards for um, for oh my god, why can't why is he why is his name, um, Zamir White? Zamir White. Zamir White. Eleven hundred. I'm gonna 11. say under. Under. Eleven hundred. I th- yeah. I think Madison's gonna get some carries in here too. Um, I I don't trust Zamir White to stay healthy for seventeen games with the workload they're gonna ask him to do. Hundred percent. Um, I think he's gonna have good games when he's healthy. I. I I, I I think there's going to be a period of time this year where he's going to miss three, four, five games at, at some point. Um, Max Crosby, twelve sacks, over. Over. Okay. Yeah, fourteen and a half last year, I think. And then ja, uh, Jack Jones, four interceptions, over, over, under, over. A little, a little more Can- difficult to get ints. I'm going to say over. He's going to take chances. Um, I, I think he, he's going to give up some balls um, for touchdowns over his head that he probably shouldn't, but it's going to re- he's going to take enough chances where he's going to take the ball away as well. It reminds me a little bit of like Terrell Buckley back in the day. Remember Terrell, Terrell Buckley? Terrell Buckley. He's going to give up a few, but he's was going he, to get his. Was too. he Florida State? Florida State, correct. Florida State. Oh, my God. Florida T-Buck. Well, Florida State. Ooh, tough time in Florida State right now. Um, you pick the wrong quarterback, it could kill you in college football. Um, or in pro football, these coaches it's, clearly don't watch film. Um, dude, I, I just I mean, school now. Yeah, I, I just don't. I don't. That is the weirdest. That was the weirdest thing in the world. I don't know what's going on with them. Um, that that, that was crazy, crazy. They definitely better better quarterbacks to him out who were available in the transfer portal. Um, the season, the Raiders, um, year one full season of Antonio Pierce. Um, they they. They were light in free agency. They did. They they made a big move to get um, Christian Wilkins, but they were kind of light in free agency. Um, they had their they had their full draft class. Um, you know, they got the quarterback situation that that, that kind of went that kind of people thought were a little bit disappointed with. What are your thoughts about the season? How what where, where, where will the Raiders be as far as record wise um, this year? I see the Raiders as an eight or nine win team. Um, I know a lot of the national media the last week or so is predicting them to be the second worst team in the AFC top five pick in the draft. I don't see that when you have superstar players like Devonte Adams, Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, Colton Miller, um, you have, you know, Jack Jones will be a household name by the end of this year. Nate Hobbs is a very good football player. when you have those kind of guys on your team, not to mention the, the kicker and the punter on this team are, are pro bowlers as well. Um, or Daniel Carlson should be. It's hard for me to think a team can can win three or four games with those level of players on their team. I also understand that the quarterback situation is not as good as it needs to be. The offensive line is probably more, it's closer to average than it is above average. Yeah. Um, we don't know about the running back room. We, we want to believe in it, but we just don't know. 
And this defense is going to have to carry the team, and it's built around that. I think this defense is good enough to keep them in almost every game. So they're going to have opportunities. They're going to have to sack the quarterback and take the ball away. This defense has to create turnovers and create havoc. Um, if they're just a bend or break defense that gets, you know, 30 sacks and, and, and a handful of interceptions and they don't force any fumbles and teams can can hold the ball and move it down the field and, and score 20, 22 points a game, then the Raiders are going to be in trouble. But I, I think they can create turnovers. Um, I think some of the, you know, the – Antonio Pierce factor last year where the team was playing really hard for him to get the job is kind of I don't know if that's going to carry over for 17 weeks I think it will yeah you'll see periods of them playing really hard and really good defense but there's going to be weeks where the defense isn't playing at that level as the number one number two defense in the league uh, like they did under Antonio Pierce and they're also going to be facing a lot better quarterbacks than they faced down the stretch last year but having said that, like I think they're going to finish, you know, eight and nine. You know, ball balances here or there, nine and eight. You know, outside chance of ten and seven. I think ten and seven is like the absolute ceiling for this team. Mm-hmm. This this could be a seven win team if if something were to happen. If they were to lose Devontae Adams or, or Max Crosby for an extended period of time, then obviously that changes everything. But assuming those two stay healthy, um, I think this team can get to nine and eight. So. I looked at it so many different ways and I'm thinking in my head that I almost wish I can do this prediction after week one, because it is because that's how, that's how in my mind, I've never seen, I never in my mind thought a, a, a first game of the year had so much bearing on a team's success because you're immediately, I mean, like either, I'm not, I'm not trying to kill anybody's optimism, but like you have to think that week two would be when you look at the schedule would be a loss. Like I mean, just 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 being like you know, I mean, the, 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 ten o'clock East Coast game. The Ravens are going to have three extra days of rest because they're exactly. playing Thursday. And if they ever, and, and, and if they and if they lost, and if they lost to the um to the Chiefs, um that that would that would make me even think, well, holy hell, I mean, are they going to lose two in a row? Like that would be a that's a tough game. This is a game where I think the Raiders need to win badly for the psyche of the fan base, number one. Um, but also that they just need to win the game because they need to get off to a good start. And I think it's really important for, for Antonio Pierce to get off to a good start because the boo, I mean the birds are gonna be chirping, the vultures are gonna be uh, vultures are gonna be circling if they're one and three after four games. So I'm gonna um you know Every time I think the Raiders are just going to be bad, it's hard to say they're going to be bad because of the they're going to be really, really bad, you know, top five pick because, like you said, you know, Max is Max is just hard to deal with. Devontae's hard to deal with. Like, those guys, even in games where they don't play well, I mean, I look at the Pittsburgh game last year. That was a loss at home, but he, was, he still was, you know, almost 20 catches. Like, he just did whatever he could to just keep the team in the game. Like, those guys – are going to win they're going to win games by themselves or, or, or keep team or keep teams in their um in in their games by themselves um and then you add Christian Wilkins to it i mean if Brock Bowers shows the promise that that we think um you know is Minshew maybe even maybe even the combination of Minshew and O'Connell just keeps them going from anywhere from 7 to like 10 wins like you said i'm going to probably say that at the end, I, I just, I just, offensive line quarterback. I think, I think it's, I think it's my biggest worry. So I'm going to go with seven wins. I think that, yeah, I, I think, that, I think the high point would be the nine wins. But I think, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's kind of a couple. It's just that that offensive, if they had a better offensive line as far as the tackle, as far as um, where Mumford is, I don't know what JPJ is yet. So 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 we'll so we'll see what JPJ is going to be. Um, hopefully he comes back soon. But I mean, I just I just worry about and I just worry about Luke Getzey a lot. Like I I just really like don't know what he's going to be as a play caller week in week out for this team. Uh, I know Devontae says he trusts him and all that stuff like that, but it's a reason why we had angst about him being a coordinator in the league, and now he's like, now he's a coordinator for the Raiders. I don't want to just like. Because I'm a Raider fan, be like, okay, yeah, 
we'll be good. Don't worry about it. So um, my biggest thing is 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 Luke Getze, the quarterback situation. But I do think, you know, anywhere between seven, I think they, they can win eight games. I think seven wins is my prediction. And then, like, they're the, I, I, at the top end, they'll can win nine games. They can win nine games as far as, as far as that is. Um, the game against the Chargers, they're getting their – they're getting the A team, getting Nance, getting Romo, predict, predicting plays every every five seconds. Um, I'm going to go with the Raiders. Just say handoff. You'll probably be right in this game. I don't, yeah, just say handoff. Just say handoff. <laughs> I'm gonna go Raiders um twenty four twenty to go ahead and win this at the win the win the opener. Um I think maybe I think with the lack of weapons, I think the defense makes a makes a play to give them a short field, um, which makes a difference in the game. Um and I think the Raiders win the game twenty four to twenty. Uh and they and they they go to two and five in so far. Man, you're giving them a week one win and then still only getting to seven. You think there's only six other wins on the schedule? I, I just, wow. uh, st- I mean, it's playing the NFC South. I just, I don't the Broncos on the well, schedule. Are, are they, are they at some point that some point in the double, the thing that's at some point in the double, the, 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 the some point, you know, sweep, 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 and sweep. I mean, are they gonna? It's my thing. Like, at some point, they're not gonna keep sweeping the Broncos over here. Like, you know, at some point, at, the, at some point. So I mean I just I just I just if these they, they face so many quarterbacks that gauntlet of quarterbacks is coming, it's just hard. It, it's just hard. I mean it's it's just I, I just I just don't know if they're gonna score enough, um to to, to beat some of these teams. I mean I think Devontae will get his Devontae will get his numbers in between the twenties. I, I I just don't know if they're gonna be able to to score. Yeah, I think I think this is going to come down like we talked about to the running game, and I think the Raiders yeah have enough bodies to stop the run enough, and I don't think the Chargers have enough explosion on the outside to take advantage of a younger secondary and of Justin Herbert. I think Max, I, I think Christian Wilkins come to the party. I think Raider fans are going to fill that place up 70, 75 percent. I I think Jack Jones has a pick six in this game. Um, I think the Raiders make a big play on special teams, whether that's Trey Tucker or Tyreek McAllister returning a kickoff or a punt. Um, and I think Gardner Minshew does just enough. And obviously Daniel Carlson coming through at the end. So I'm going to take the Raiders 23 to 20 uh, on a late mm-hmm. field goal. And I think obviously with the defensive touchdown, I don't think the Raiders offense is going to be explosive, but I think they're going to be able to control the ball. I think they're going to run it enough. I think they're going to get the ball in the hands of Brock Bowers enough um, to where the Raiders are going to have a nice, hopefully, you know, time of possession will be in their favor yeah. and then just win, just win the turnover battle. And I, I think not allowing Bosa and Mac to just pin their ears back and come after them um, is going to help. I think when you start breaking down the chargers, as much as you want to get excited about them, I don't think the style of offense they play, is going to benefit those two pass rushers because I don't I don't think they're going to be an explosive offense that's going to go out there and put up twenty seven to thirty points to where now you can just have those two edge rushers just eat. Back, they're going yeah. to have to stop yeah. the run. Um, yeah. th- this team I don't see the Chargers just going out there and winging the ball over the field. That's not what Greg Roman does. Now they, there's going to be misdirection. Um, if they wear you down and you can't stop the run, they're just going to run it down your throat. But I, I don't think this is going to be an offense that's going to go out there. Like I said, just chuck it around the field. I would bet the under um, if I was betting this game. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I, I would assume it's somewhere in the upper 40s. Um, I would probably take the under. Let's check that out real quick. The Raiders, Chargers. And then the Raiders are only the Raiders are favored in only two games this season. Um, and that's probably the Bronco game and another game. I, I, think, I, I think the last time I checked the line, it was the Chargers were two and a half point favorites. The money and money is the money. The money is definitely coming in on the Raiders. No question about so, it. So yeah, it, you would think the that Raiders, Chargers, usually get three Raiders. points for the home field advantage. So you know, there's pretty much a toss up according to Vegas. Yes, the, and 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 that's why that's why it just makes sense to go with the underdog in this spot here. Um, I'm trying to find this the over under. Let me see what over under is. Before we head out, let's see here. Why is it taking so long? 
to find the over under. You could probably grab it right here on my phone. Yeah, if you grab it on your phone, maybe it'd be quicker. If the Raiders over under. Got it right here. It's 45. Oh, 40.5. I would take the over. That's a low. Oh, so 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 they think so 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 they think nobody's scoring. And this it opened at forty two and a half, and it's down to forty point five. Scratch what I said. Take the over. Forty point five is a pretty low low bar to clear. All right, Ray Nation. Um, we got real live football coming up. Um, uh, got the who? Okay, you got a Friday night game too in Brazil. Um, right. Um, they're telling everybody not to leave their. The kids to keep their families in the United States and not leave, not leave the not leave their hotels. So like I don't know why we're I don't know why they're playing playing somewhere where they gotta do all that. But hey, it's an um, NFL trying to expand their brand out there. And then Thursday night football, the love the lovely Chiefs and then the, um and the Ravens play. So we'll see if the if the Ravens can um can 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 beat the Chiefs here uh, as far as that goes. All right, so we got a different difference of opinion on the on the season, but we both we I think we both agree on the Raiders. We're winning this game. I I, I think the Raiders. You get you get so I did a lot of motion in this game. I, I think the the Raiders the Raiders will carry the day, and they'll have the crowd there as well too. So hopefully that will, um, a, AP can um can, house can change the house of horrors that um that place has been for the Raiders over the years. All right, Ryan. Um, All right. Take care. Have a great night, brother. All right, you too.